When you declare a method, you can specify modifiers to that declaration to change some of the fundamental characteristics of the method. Every method must be declared with a name and a return data type. A method can also have one or more argument values passed to it, and it can have one or more modifiers in front of it. This lesson explains the modifiers. This is a method with no modifiers. It's declared to return an int value, and it has no arguments. All methods can be accessed inside their own class no matter what, but access from outside the class can be specified. This example allows the access to the method to default, and the default is that any class in the same package as this one can access the method. The access can be opened up to every class, no matter what package it's in, by specifying it as public. This modifier takes off all access limitations. On the other hand, you can limit access to being only from inside the class by declaring the access as private. Just like the data items, this method can be accessed only from inside the class. You can't even access it from a subclass. You can take that one restriction off of it by making it protected. A protected method can only be called from within its own class and from subclasses of the class. Nowhere else. Those are all the access modifiers, just like the ones for data, default, public, private, and protected. But there are a few other modifiers for methods. A static method is also known as a class method. A static method resides in memory in the class definition, not in each object. It can be called from any other method in the class, static or not. One thing about a static method, it cannot directly access data that is not also static. You can see why. If you reference a dynamic data item from inside a static method, it has no way of knowing which object you're talking about that contains the data. An abstract method is a method declaration that has no body. That makes it an incomplete method definition, and it must be declared as abstract. The class that holds an abstract method must also be abstract. It must be an abstract class, and the class must be declared as abstract. If you forget to use the word abstract anywhere, the compiler will remind you. You cannot create an instance of an object with an abstract method. You can only use it as a superclass and finish the method declaration in the subclass. A final method is one that cannot be changed in a subclass. Normally, a subclass can override a method with a method of its own of the same name, but a final method cannot be overridden. A synchronized method can only be invoked by one thread at a time. If you have a multiple threaded application and one thread is in the middle of this method, any other thread will simply be blocked from calling it until the first one finishes and returns. We'll be going through some examples of this later. If you want to call a function written in another language, such as C, and call it from Java, you declare it as native and you can call it directly. You'll need to write the C function and set it up to be called. And the technique for doing this varies from one C compiler to the next and from one operating system to the next. You can find out how to do this on the Sun website. Search for the JNI, the Java Native Interface. You can use more than one modifier on a method as long as no two of the modifiers conflict. The order of the modifiers doesn't matter, except that they all must come before the return type declaration. And the return type declaration must come right before the name of the method.